talk about money in the bank. Was it good or bad? What is going on guys, Brett Alive back with another video today. We have the Money in the Bank 2024 review setup video. We are going to be talking about Money in the Bank 2024. It just went down yesterday from Toronto, Canada, July 6th of 2024. This show was pretty decent. It had its flaws. We are going to talk about the good stuff. We are going to talk about the bad stuff. And I am still taking in everything that happened, especially with the Money in the Bank cash in happening this night i am curious about your thoughts please let me know your thoughts about this show down in the comment section down below oh, this is gonna make me cry I'm gonna talk about money in the bank so let's go opening up the show was the men's money in the bank match six men gunning for the briefcase which was su suspended high above the ring la knight jay uso andrade also had carmelo hayes drew mcintyre Chad Gable. This was a solid men's ladder match. I felt like it should have been longer. I felt like it was short. Was I the only one that like was like, what? It's over already? What? I don't know. I felt like this match could have been a lot longer. There were, there were some good spots where even Chad Gable suplexed absolutely everyone in the match, including LA Knight, to the outside who landed on a freaking ladder. They had me thinking Jey Uso was going to win, okay? They really did. He was at the top of the ladder, and it didn't work out. Drew McIntyre had pushed him down. Carmelo Hayes, I'd be surprised if he still walked tomorrow uh bro literally got sent on top of a ladder by andrade so fast too it was like a sunset flip power bomb on a ladder and i was like oh my god it happened so fast the ladder didn't break unfortunately but it was just insane uh and then to top it off at the end we did see drew mcintyre climb the ladder and retrieve the money in the bank contract i felt like it was so easy for drew he just walked up and he just he grabbed the contract and i was like oh my god here we go punk's gonna push over the ladder punk's gonna push over the ladder which which they, in my opinion, I feel like they should have done that. I feel like Punk should have just pushed over the ladder, screwed Drew out of the Money in the Bank contract. I think that would have been really cool. But we will talk about what happened later. But Drew does win the contract. Oh, I wanted it to be Jay. I really wanted it to be freaking Jay. L Jay once again loses the big one, and that is just so heartbreaking. But Drew McIntyre wins. And remember what Drew McIntyre said? He said, if I win that contract, I'm going to freaking cash it in that night. But like I said, I thought this was a really solid men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Could it have been longer? Absolutely. Uh, but overall, I did enjoy it. Do we have a new intercontinental champion? Braun Breaker went one-on-one -on -one with Sami Zayn for the IC Championship prediction video. I kept saying how no way Braun Breaker gets pinned. There's no chance in freaking the world that Braun gets pinned. And I don't think Sami's going to get pinned either. I was 100% wrong. Braun Breaker gets pinned. What? This shocked the absolute hell out of me. Uh, I, I enjoyed the match. I thought it was really decent. Sami Zayn was being treated like an underdog during the match, obviously, like he should be. Braun Breaker's obviously the stronger guy here. This was for the IC title. And Sami Zayn came out on top with a Halula kick, man. I was so shocked to see this. I could see some people being disappointed about this because Braun Breaker literally brand new. Brand new on the main roster. And here he is taking a loss to Sami Zayn. I love Sami Zayn. Don't get me wrong. But like, and I had him winning this match, but it just caught me off guard that he won with such ease. I was expecting a ricochet, a ricochet appearance, ricochet screws Breaker, making him look less bad. But no, Braun Breaker underestimated Sami Zayn and he shouldn't have. And still, your intercontinental champion. What do you guys think? Do you guys think Braun Breaker should have won this? The host of Money in the Bank 2024 made her appearance, that being Trish Stratus. She's from Toronto, so how apropos that she comes out. I was like, okay, she's going to hype up the crowd. Hey, are we having fun tonight? Hey, how about this? Hey, how about a 16-time world champion? What the? This caught me insanely off guard. Trish Stratus comes out. I'm like, okay, yeah, Trish Stratus. I'm going to go on my phone here for a second. And then I hear her say 16-time world champion. And here I'll pop John Cena, bro. John Cena? He runs down to the ring. And I was like oh my gosh like here we go another storyline is somebody gonna interrupt him he announces his retirement what cena what so at first i was like okay he's announcing his retirement tonight and he's done after tonight he's done but no 
thank God. Uh, he announced that his final match and his final appearance wrestling on a WWE show will be at WrestleMania 2025, that being WrestleMania 41 in Las Vegas, which I will be there, uh, which is awesome. Uh, but, dude, this was this is pretty sad. This shows that I've been watching wrestling for a decent amount of time. To John Cena's retirement, like, that is absolutely insane. It doesn't feel like a lie. This doesn't feel like a curveball. This feels real. He had the whole T-shirt. He had the whole new ordeal, the final run of John Cena. Like, it's insane. He said, you want some? Come get some. Who is going to be his final rival? Is he going to get another world championship? Breaking Ric Flair's record? I really hope so. He deserves to. That's not even a question. He deserves to be the, the most to ever old WWE World Championships. Like, literally, he deserves it so much. Uh, give him a championship again, please. And uh, his retirement match, who is going to be his retirement opponent? I am so curious. But this promo had me not tearing up, but very just like, what? Like, I can't believe it, dude. Like, what? Uh, I like his new shirt, by the way. I'm definitely going to be buying his new shirt. But this promo, was, this promo was pretty crazy. The match where Drew McIntyre vowed if he were to win the ladder match, he will cash in money in the bank. Seth Rollins, Damian Priest, WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I loved during this match that Seth Rollins and Damian Priest kept looking up by the entrance stage because they're like, oh yeah, we have a Mr. Money in the Bank. He said he was going to cash in. I'm worried. I love that attention to detail. This match was really solid. I did enjoy it. But this ending to this match, I was so pissed. Damian Priest gets hit with the Falcon Arrow by Seth Rollins. This isn't being talked about. He gets hit by the Falcon Arrow by Seth Rollins. One, two, the ref just stops his hand. Damian Priest doesn't kick out. He doesn't raise his shoulder. And the referee just stops his hand and says that was two. I was like, bro didn't even move. What do you mean that was two? I was like, are you kidding me right now? Seth Rollins is the new world champion. He's literally the new world champion. He had Drew... No, he had Damian Priest pinned. It was over. He did it. But the referee just said it was two. I was like, are you kidding me right now? Um, I feel like Damian Priest probably got knocked out from the Falcon Arrow for a short time. That's why he wasn't able to comprehend that he needed to kick out at two. Uh, but I was just like, oh my God, Seth Rollins literally just won. What the heck? Uh, but anyways, right after that botch, freaking Drew McIntyre makes his entrance music hit. And then he comes out with the briefcase. He walks out and he cashes in. He freaking cashes in. The bell rings. Drew McIntyre cashes in. Very similar to WrestleMania 31. It is now a triple threat match because he cashed in during the match he didn't wait after the match which i recommend doing because then you only have to fight one guy um but drew cashes in and then immediately it felt like immediately gets attacked by cm punk this is brother dink's prediction he was freaking right that freaking maniac was right check out the prediction video if you guys want to see uh but cm punk comes out steel chair in hand just starts assaulting drew chair shot chair shot chair shot and just br just mutilates Drew. He, he, he destroys him. He destroys him, leaves Drew at no chance, sends him back in the ring. Damian Priest takes advantage. One, two, three. Damian Priest retains his World Heavyweight Championship and stays in the Judgment Day. But the thing is, Seth Rollins is pissed because now he can never challenge Damian Priest ever again as long as he is champion because of CM Punk. Remember the animosity? They were, forced, they were supposed to fight each other at WrestleMania 40. That was confirmed by Triple H. Seth Rollins, CM Punk were supposed to fight each other at WrestleMania 40. That's re- activating their rivalry. I love that. But at the same time, it's like, oh my gosh, now we have no money in the men's money in the bank briefcase on Monday Night Raw. It, it, that men's briefcase is just gone, thrown in the garbage. It's like the match never even happened. That's the only annoying part of this. That's why I said earlier in the video that I feel like Drew should have just been climbing the ladder, almost had the contract, and then Punk just pushes over the ladder. Okay, that's just my current reaction to this as of now. I love it. I feel like Punk screwing it for Drew. That advances their storyline even more. I heard Drew McIntyre went berserk post-show, uh, understandably. But overall, I felt like this was a lot to take in. It was good, but I'm still just trying to digest it. I still don't know how to feel about it. Um, I like just to know that the briefcase is just thrown in the garbage like that, basically. It's just like, ah, uh, that's the rough part. It's just no Money in the Bank contract. Like, it's just gone garbage like no it's like no match even happened um but overall it was it was okay overall i still can't get over the falcon arrow non-kickout that botch just had me like Arr! i was angry i was mad i'm like seth rollins is the new world champion right now what is going on the women's money in the bank ladder match was insane Corey graves uh, described it as i did it was an absolute car crash all right was it sloppy yes 
okay? You cannot tell me this match was not sloppy, all right? In the beginning of this match, it was just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my, what the heck? Like, just miss after miss, and I was like, oh my goodness. There were some great spots with Naomi. I felt like Naomi did a fantastic job in this match, like doing the splits between two ladders. Io Sky was going crazy. Uh, Zoe Stark took an insane fall off the ladder. Uh, that was crazy. Naomi got slammed on the ladder. Chelsea Green took the wildest bump. She was about to win the match, and then the ladder got pushed over by Tiffany Stratton, and then Chelsea Green fell like 15 feet through two tables. I was like, oh my god, that's insanity. Uh, and then right after that, Tiffany Stratton. Yes, yes, Tiffany Stratton is your Miss Money in the Bank. Thank God uh, we got a briefcase still on the show. They didn't cash it in that night um, because there was no women's championship match to cash in on. But I'm glad Tiffany Stratton is Miss Money in the Bank. I felt like she deserved it. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait till she customizes the briefcase because I think she's going to be holding on to it for a while. So make it pink, make it fancy, make it Tiffy-esque. I am very excited to see what she's going to do with that contract. I think that's going to advance her character so much. Uh, and dude, I, overall, I did enjoy the women's ladder match. But like I said, it was just sloppy. It looked ultra dangerous being in this match which i mean it is a ladder match um but it was just it was it was a car crash it was absolutely insanity it really was like my goodness um it was insane Vinny stratton coming out on top i loved that that was my prediction too really excited about it now top it off at the end probably the most disappointing match of the night the match that i was expecting so much from i was expecting so much from this match once i heard that it was going to be the main event i was like oh boy they got something big planned they're going to announce another member of the bloodline somebody's going to return randy orton's going to turn on cody what's going to happen something big is going to happen what happened basically nothing basically nothing. Okay, the match was crazy. The match was crazy. Uh, once again, Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton uh, going up against the new bloodline. This was absolute chaos. The ref did end up getting knocked down, and the match went absolute to hell. Uh, you saw Kevin Owens do a powerbomb through the freaking table, and then it looked like uh, Kevin Owens was going to take out Tama Tonga, but it didn't really work out. Got low blowed by Tonga Loa, who actually hit Tama Tonga in the head while he was trying to low blow Kevin Owens. What a botch. Um, <laughs> but I hate using the word botch uh, with wrestling, but it is. I mean, Dude, he literally hit his own partner. Jacob Fatu looked amazing. I really think Jacob Fatu really was the highlight of this match. He's just an absolute monster. Like, taking massive shots from Randy Orton and getting back up immediately is just monumental. That's insane. But like I said, the referee got knocked down, and then the bloodline was able to take advantage and really just tear apart uh, Cody Rhodes and the rest of his team. And then we did see Solo Sokoa freaking hit Cody Rhodes with the Samoan spike, and I'm like, oh my god, is he actually about to pin him right now? One, two, three. I was like, what? The, the new Tribal Chief Solo Sokoa just pins Cody Rhodes like that. I was like, oh my god. Like, I get, that was the biggest shocker of the match. Like, the pinfall. I was like, dude, Cody Rhodes just got pinned. Our literal undisputed champion. Uh, that's insanity. And I was expecting something else. Like, I don't know. I was just expecting more from this. Uh, I did have the bloodline winning. Um, not Cody Rhodes getting pinned. That's crazy. Um, but, yeah, this is, I don't know. I hope Triple H has a plan here because this, this shocked me. I'm still trying to digest this entire show. I literally just finished watching this. So, this is my raw reaction. Some of my thoughts on the things that happened might change as I think about them more, but this is my raw reaction to the show. I just finished watching Money in the Bank. Uh, you guys can let me know your thoughts on the show. What do you guys think of the winners, the losers, the screw-ups? Uh, even Corey Graves was holding back Seth Rollins. He wanted a piece of punk. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, I thought the show was just okay. I hate to even say that because I love Money in the Bank, but this show is just okay. That's my opinion. You let me know yours down in the comment section down below. My favorite moment was probably the random Cena return and then him announcing his retirement i thought that was like the craziest moment of the night i really did i thought that was wild if i had to rank this show out of 10 dude i hate to do this but i'm gonna give this show a solid six out of ten that's mid that's mid uh once again I, let me know if i'm hating way too much on this show but there was some good stuff it's just man it was sloppy it was sloppy dude uh let me know your thoughts on money in the bank 2024 down in the comment section down below and I really enjoyed my little setup video here that I did for the show. And I will see you guys next time. This is Bird Alive signing out.